Hey guys, got a project I'm doing right now. Got a bunch of parts on the floor, but that ain't the project. Here's the project. I'm making a cam holding tool for door cam, uh, GM door cam, oh, uh, GM 3.5 door cam. Okay, here's the problem. You get a plastic tool, right? You pay an arm and leg for the sucker and blah, blah, blah. And I'm not going to go on and on and on, but here's how you make the tool. I'll show you my tool making. Um, now, you guys see this? Screwed that in, right? You guys wonder why there's so many bolts. All your cam holding tool. Okay, just imagine this you got a cam line here a flat lobe of your cam sits here and here okay the whole idea of this is to it's kind of hard to do this by one hand Okay, the whole idea is to put a cam here. Okay, there's a cam that sits there. And there's a cam that sits here. Okay, the flat spot sits on this side. Flat spot sits on this side. So you go smash this down. Here's my nuts. Well, you put your washer on first, then your nut. So, each one of them will have a washer and a nut. Okay, you tighten that down until this is really tight. I mean, not too tight where you're bending everything or breaking everything, but tight enough so it don't move. So, when you lock that cam, that tighten it up, lock it in. That's better than plastic. Now, you guys wonder how I figured out what exactly I did here. Well, what I do is grind the heads of these full, fully, thro fully threaded bolts. Well, except for one. That's what they look like. <clears throat> They're just carrot bolts. Fully threaded carrot bolts. So, now you guys are wondering why this is all set. Well, I've said it because you want the, these um, bolts on this side of your cam, not having them away from it. You'll see more and more. You'll see when I update this uh, video. This is just making a video, and then I'll do a video of me installing these on the motor. So, yeah, now. You guys, I'm not going to tell you what the spacing is. You guys have to come up and figure out how to do it. Now, if you guys have a nose intrigue, then I can pretty much give you the dimensions to a point. But each motor might be different. But I can give you a rough idea how I did it. Now, you guys want me to make you a tool, I can make them. But I haven't figured out how much I'll sell them. Well, it's pretty easy if you guys, you guys have concept. Okay, now let's go over here. Now, this is what I was using. One inch by one inch wide, what it is, by 48 inches long. It's a hot roll steel. It's only 3 sixteenths thick. So, it's just plain steel. Okay, now you guys, to figure out roughly what your cam is, I'm, like I said, I'm not going to show you the dimensions and crap, so you just basically want to go, set, set one end from on your one side of your head, and the other side on the other head. Okay, when you get that laid in, 
okay, when you get it set on your head, so you got the where your valve cover sit, your gasket sits down on the head, that's where you want this edge at, okay, and on both sides. Then when you get slid in, you want to leave yourself a little bit of room between your cam, but not too much room, just a little bit, so you have a little bit of slide back and forth. And then you want to mark with a marker, or permanent marker, or whatever, permanent marker, or steel pen, if you got like a marker that is for steel, which I have one around it somewhere, which I don't know where it's at, All right there. Industrial paint marker is what I'm using. But you want to mark your one cam on both sides and then cam on the other side. And then you want to line this up as best you can. And you basically, um, you can pretty much use, I mean, you have scrap something cardboard could work too. You can make a cardboard template out of what you need. And then you just line it up to your steel and then you just mark it and then you take it, go down to your next section. You gotta make four of these pieces. Now let me get you set up so I can get this cut and that'll show you what to do after that. But both your sides of your head is going to be all the same. Both sides. But I'm just saying each motor might be different. But on mine, both sides of the motor is the same. Now, however you want to cut it, I usually cut it before the line. It's just the way I marked it. So, however you guys want to cut it. Basically, just lay your steel in however you want to cut it. And cut it however you guys want to cut it. I usually cut off. I just use a grinder. Works for me. Okay, there's one. Now, when you what end, whatever end you cut off, put it towards the end that you just cut. So both of your cut ends are the same. Now there, you don't have no screw up when you put your cam together, which I have to flip my steel. Don't buy it right to be honest. I think. Now I gotta write the first time. And then mark it one more time. Or in your case, you'll be making four of these cuts. Me, I just made one. Okay, now I'll cut it.
Now, if you do it right, you'll have a little bit of piece left over. So, I have over stacks. So. Four feet's good enough. Now, make sure I'm getting this in the picture. Now, you want to make sure your cut ends the same. So, which that one ain't. So, whatever ends the hottest. Or whatever end lines up the best. Which that's about the best you're going to get it. Now you keep them together. And I'll show you what to do from there. Now you want to vice them in. Put them together in your vise. Okay. If you had a cardboard template, be then this would be the best time to do it. Which I don't have a cardboard template because I did mine on the fly. Which you want to make sure this is flush so you can make your Line it just right. Now, in my case, here's my template, my first one I made. So I'll just lay it down on a scale, roughly line it up to both dead on. Okay, that's now let me from a vice grip that just had. Your cardboard template might be different, but if you already made a metal one, then you want to make sure this is dead line that you're copying. With one screw up, your tool is shot. I'm pretty much darn even what I need. Now I got transfer dies. Just got like a point. So you want to find the one that fits in the bust. For my case. But if you're doing a cardboard template, all you need to do is just take take a, a metal punch. That's got a centering punch on it. You just want to center your holes so they're not wobble guard. And I'll show you in a second how to do this. Now, in my case, say this if this was a punch, then I want to find the dead center of the hole and hit it. Which I already got a center hole there now. Center hole there. Center hole there. And that hole screwed up. So. It still works what I need it. Alright guys, let's try it again. Now, I went with four and a half. Okay guys, now back to what I was doing before this camera filled up.
All right. Now I told you what these are. They're panhead bolts, or they're quarter-inch panhead bolts. Take my word, they're quarter-inch. They're three and a half inches long. Overkill. All right. Once you got your marks done on that piece of steel, now here's how you do it. Once you center punch your holes, okay, and you take off your template, keep your pair of vice grips on here. Okay, I'm trying to think. I did mine kind of hard the first time, but this time I'm doing it different. Okay, make sure your vice grips still, make sure this is all still aligned, now the vice grips. You see my um, vise on my drill press? Well, I didn't have it, so I had to use these a pair of vice grips and holding it. Now I got a pair of vice, so now I hope you guys know how to drill. Here's my quarter inch bits, what I'm going to stop with. Now, what I'll do is I'll always start with my smallest, well, not my smallest, but close to my small one, and then. Just step on up. Just keep on stepping up. Skip a few at a time. And you get a hole drill pretty good. Now I don't know what size I just... I started out with... Let me give you a rough idea of what I started out with. I started out with a 764th drill bit. And I worked... I skip every other one. Now I took my uh, 760 that bit up quite way, so <clears throat> I do that so I don't break the drill bit. Pretty smart idea, if I may say. Now I lock in, lay this in here. Wobble this sucker up here. I use a drill press. You guys can use a hand drill if you guys want it. Really want it to. Now, if I do everything right, let me go a little bit more. Now, if I center punch it right, this tool's got to be kicked up just a little bit. Now I'm center punch. So what I'll do is lock this in, keep my vice on my vice grips here, and lock this sucker in. And now we'll drill. can't drill. That well when your drill bit is bottoming out. Your drill press is bottoming out. Now what I do, yeah, I'll drill these three off camera. I stay with my drill bit, do all three, and then I'll come back. All right, guys, grab, just got done. I just laid over there. Now I just grabbed a step, a second step up from what I had, which is seven sixteenths. I skipped once at one eighth. I went nine sixty fourth. So. I go nine nine sixty fourth. That I'm a chuck. Lock 
lock it down. Put this set in. Wobble it back up. That's why I wish I could get a new drill press. Okay, that one's done, guys. Okay, now I'll step up to a next size. I'll skip another one and go with. So that was 974. Uh, let's see what we're going to now. We are going to 1164. That's why you always use your vice. Not a piece of crap stuff. That's why you use the vice. This is what you might have to do, which I hate on it. You get slivers inside of these. Now, if you had to do that, what you do is put these back in here, find the last hole you drilled, lay it down, make sure you're lined.
which I am aligned now. Now, this is what you might have to go from the back. Should be another thirteen sixty fourth. Let me see. All right, I'll get back to you guys. Okay, guys, I'm in the final step now. Final drill bits in there. So let's get going. done it right, your bolt should go right in the hub. Should be a quarter inch bolt fit right through a quarter inch hub. Now you can take your vice grips off. You guys want to clean up the uh, bolts, a little, uh, the holes a little bit better, go ahead. I ain't worried about it. You guys give me a second. Now if you guys put all these thread bolts together, should have a cam holding tool. Just like that. It looks like a ladder, pretty much. So pretty much you should have a ladder looking tool. Okay, if you guys give me a second, I'm going to put you down.
I do have a second one. Minus the fingers. Show you this one. Here's your second. So this front cam, rear cam. And that should how it should look. So what cost me eight bucks, eight, nine bucks for what I just done. A little bit of labor. Eight, nine bucks, a little bit of labor. I think it turned out pretty good. Give me a second, guys. Now, if you guys put them back to back like that, they should all line up, which mine does. So, nine bucks, not bad. I have a farm store, a rural king, where I live. Where I live, I have a farm store called Working. Here's what I got. Okay. Flat steel, one by eight. Yellow hot is what they call it. At six ninety-nine. Bolt note, washers, grade two, blah blah. blah. So it was a dollar. So that's what I got into it. Minus the dollar ninety nine, so yeah, minus the dollar ninety nine for connectors. You may have less than eight bucks to build this tool. Not bad. So I hope that you guys learned something new about anybody can make a tool. So I'll see you guys later. It's getting late. I'm getting tired. I gotta go to work tomorrow. Tomorrow's Friday. Tomorrow. I'll show you how to install these tools. And I'm going to pull you up. So, see you guys later. Bye.